Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for a quick preview of Project 5. So in on ACE, under in-class code, I've uploaded a, a binary file. It's called a tarball. It's basically a tape archive that's compressed. So it's a tar.gz, but uh, the convention is to contract that into just tgz, a tape archive a gzipped tape, tape archive. So I'm going to click download on that guy and then uh, you'll see it's in my downloads folder. There it is. So what I want to do is uh, pop over to Cloud9 and upload it. So I'll say uh, upload local files. I'll click on the select files and then I'll go to my downloads here and find it. There it is. And that will upload it as a tarball to Cloud9. So, fantastic. If I do an ls-la star gz, oops, I should find it. There it is, exp.tgz. The way you unpack that guy is to use the tape archive command. Extract is dash x. Uh, I like to do v for verbose, uh, z for decompress, f for file. And then uh, the argument to f, of course, is the name of the file. So we'll go ahead and specify exp.tgz and there you have it so I'll cd down into that guy and you'll see it's sort of our standard structure there's no readme or anything it's this is a preview of project 5 uh, it's not the whole thing so but the make file works so if I type make it should actually build something notice it's compiling three files it's compiling a work object file which is the one you guys will be working on in project 5 it's compiling a main program that, uh, in this case, it builds a histogram of random numbers. And there's a random number generator that I've provided. Um, I pulled from a, a classic in numerical analysis called Numerical Recipes in C that's no longer in copyright, so we can use it. If I execute uh, build a dot out, it asks me for a number of iterations, I'll say a thousand, and it returns a histogram. You'll notice it's creating a histogram of uh, counts of random numbers in different bins. It's bins 0 through 99, and uh, you can see there's some variation in the number of random numbers that landed in each bin. So that's the way that works. What, I'd, what I want to do today is to have you guys modify the... Um, if I look in here, under source, there's the main program. It's uh, It clears the histogram, it can print the histogram, and it, uh, it initializes this random number generator. Let's go ahead and pull up the header file for that guy. Notice that the random number generator has some state. And I did modify the random number generator from numerical recipes to make it re-entrant. In other words, to enable it for you guys to be able to use it with threads. Now, we're not going to use it with threads in Project 5, but we might play around with that in the last few weeks of the semester. Um, so what it does is it, it allows the random number generator to accept a pointer to a state structure. And the state structure contains all the state information for the random number generator. In this case, it's... Uh, an array of 32 longs and then a couple more longs and that makes 34 longs altogether. Um, the actual implementation of the random number generator is complicated. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, if you're interested, Numerical Recipes in C is freely available. It's out of copyright. You can Google it, download the whole book, and read about it if you like. Um, what I want to have you guys do today is to modify this main program instead of doing what it does, which is to make a histogram of random numbers uh, from 0 to his size minus 1. His size in this case is 100. Um, where is that defined? Up here. I want you to keep track of the number of times a certain combination of uh, sums of values on the head on the top of two six-sided dice arises. So let's see, if it's two six-sided dice, the minimum number would be two, the maximum number would be 12. So that makes 11 combinations. So we'll change our histogram to 11. Um, 
and then the idea is we're still going to ask for a number of iterations we're still going to build a histogram but this time we're going to instead of just creating a histogram of uh, random numbers we're going to let the random number be represent the number of side the number on a six-sided die so um, for that purpose I guess we could get rid of X well no we, I guess we can keep X so let's let uh, we'll have die 1 and die 2 be the um, be the value on the two dies and then we'll let sum be the sum maybe and I'll let you figure out how to do that so you're gonna say uh, you know, die one equals something, and then uh, get another random number. The idea is you keep passing the same state in every time, and it updates the state when it generates the new random number. Say die two equals something else. Then you'll say sum equals die one plus die two. Um, and then, of course, the idea is to build, <coughs> build a histogram. But um, die 1 and die 2 are going to be numbers 1 to 6. So sum is going to be 2 to 12. Um, but the histogram index starts at 0. So we're going to have to use sum minus 2 as the index. And then increment that each time. So that's really all there is to it. So I just need you guys to fill in. How do I calculate these two die values? That shouldn't be too bad. Given a random number between 0 and 1, how do I produce uh, the value on the top of a six-sided die? Turn that into a random number. Um, I should point out that the other thing the main program does is it simply uh, calculates, it calls the do work function. Do work is defined in work.c. This is for project 5. Right now do work doesn't do anything. It just uh, calculates a, uh, it just does a doubly nested loop from 0 to n. So it's just wasting time. Um, but the idea is to convert this, to change this into a function that estimates pi. Using the technique of Monte Carlo um, integration. Basically what we're going to do is throw darts at a board. Uh, if the dart lands inside the unit circle, then we're going to count it. And if it doesn't, we're not going to count it. And the fraction of darts that we count uh, times 4 will end up being equal to pi. So there's an example of that. There's actually a Python program that shows how it works. Um, this is written in Python. So you make a loop for i goes from 0 to n minus 1. Um, you generate two random numbers. You square them and add them. That gives you the distance from the origin. If it's less than 1, then it's in the unit circle, and you increment the total. If it's greater than 1, it's not in the unit circle, and you don't increment the total. And if you think about it, since the area of a circle is pi r squared, uh, and we're looking at the first quadrant of that circle, the value of pi is going to be 4 times the total divided by n. So if approximately 3 fourths of the 3.14 fourths of the uh, dot of the darts land inside that unit circle. Actually, it's pi over 4. So if you multiply by 4 and then uh, divide by the total number of darts, you get an estimate of pi. Here's a version that uses the numpy. Uh, array concept. So you do the same thing except you calculate a boolean array and then you add up the number of uh, ones that you get and it, it basically produces the same result. It's just a lot faster because numpy arrays are relatively fast. Um, and then in the final project there's going to be a third call that calls your C program and compares the uh, plain old Python way, the NumPy way, and then using your C program, it's going to call uh, your code and estimate pi using that. Um, okay, so that's basically how it works. Please let me know if you have any questions. 
um, go ahead and try to do the die thing. We're going to do that in class this week. And uh, let me know if you have any trouble. Take care.